We're located in western South Dakota, in between the Badlands and the Black Hills. My family bought the 777 Ranch in the early 70s, and we were a cow-calf, Black Angus, Hereford Ranch. In the early 1980s, when we switched to bison, we also got involved with holistic management. It fit our, our goals and our decision that we wanted to manage the ranch as a whole. It wasn't just about raising bison and being profitable. It was about taking care of the wildlife, the plants, the soil, the people who work here, and the communities that are nearby. To, to us, everything was important, and holistic management kind of brought it all together, and it gave us a roadmap on how really to best take care of this amazing piece of land that we have. And really the bison are just part of my team. You know, they do a very good job of helping us restore the land. And over 30 years of practicing holistic management, we've been able to bring back species diversity, not only in plant species, but also in, in wildlife. We've brought back a lot of native grasses. And actually in, in the 30 years, we've built topsoil out here. So basically, we're trying to mimic what the big bison herds back in the 1800s used to do. They used to come through, they would just graze as they go, and they would not come back until the following year and, and hit it again. By planning our grazing, we're trying to mimic how the herds used to work through an area. So we plan our grazing. We do a, a growing season plan and a non-growing season plan because this environment out here is very brittle, which means we don't get a lot of rain. On average, maybe 14 inches a year. Sometimes we have seven year droughts, but by planning our grazing and with our way of decision making, we've been able to not have to destock because we're managing our grass. The relationship between grazing and grass, I mean, you graze grass for a reason because it's designed to be grazed. And if you don't graze it, it's gonna oxidize in the air and it's gonna die. That plant neither needs to be converted by an animal into manure or it needs to be stepped on by an animal and be touching the ground so those microbes can decompose it and compost it and make more nutrients in the soil to grow more grass. Concentrating our animals has, allows us to build litter, and litter eventually builds soil. So you have hoof action, you have dung and urine, and all that stuff is getting back into the soil. We have great infiltration. So all that water that does hit is not compacting soil because we have a, a layer of litter on top. And that litter eventually becomes topsoil, and that just helps get all the nutrients down into the soil. And, and the carbon, you know, we're sequestering carbon because we have more plants out here. So we have bigger leaves, more leaves, and a diversity of different leaf types. Our original plan had 21 pastures, and then we've been cutting up into paddocks. So we've taken like a 3,000 acre pasture and cut it up into 250 to 300 acre paddocks. So we're running, stocking it at at 10 animals an acre during while they're there and shortening up our grazing period and increasing our rest, the bloom that you're getting, the recovery, the growth that we're seeing in those paddocks is just amazing compared to having them out there because you'd beat up one side of your pasture and the other side was underutilized. Now you're utilizing it even more uniform and you're getting more pounds of grazing per acre out of that pasture than you did before, which goes back to production per acre, which is dollars per acre. I think the awareness now for grasslands, any type of land, there's an awareness now and people are realizing the importance of it. And, I, and it's nice that that awareness is, is happening and now people are taking care of it and trying to make a difference and to regenerate grasslands because it hasn't been taken care of. It's been abused and now people realize that, you know what, all that abuse is taking its toll. Now we got to take care of it and we got to nurture it and bring it back. The domino effect right now for taking care of land is 
encouraging and I think there's hope for the future.